Hi, it's Kim and welcome to the video today. What I'm going to do today is make some changes in my front garden. Once again, I want to rearrange things. So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. I've partially did, uh, dug up some of my plants from the back garden and I'm bringing them to the front. We've gotten rid of some bushes. There was a big boxwood here and a couple spirea. I've dug those out. So now it's just straight to the end of the sidewalk. And what I've done is placed some big root geranium. I did have Johnson Blue there. There were two clumps of it, two mounds. And I've got the big root geranium now lying there waiting to be planted. I have a little bit of the big root right here already. And then that is the big mound of blushing turtle that I planted last spring. It's doing really, really well. So we've moved this particular pot. We've kind of repositioned it. And then I've got this one that we've repositioned. I previously had this pot was previously over here next to the blushing turtle. But I've changed that around. I think I want the flowers edging the sidewalk. And we'll put the hypertufa trough here edging the sidewalk. Now I've got two more. I'm going to do my crevice hypertufa here in this area. And I have another round one that I'm going to put in that area. I haven't really made up my mind which. Around the downspout, I'm going to plant the Johnson Blue. I moved the Johnson Blue away from this inner circle because it was a little taller than the other plants. And I like these low growing big root geraniums better. And I'll put all the names on the top corner so you can see the names of these plants. So we'll have a big root here out front. They spread and I'm sure they'll take up a lot of space right up here. And I'm sure they'll spread along the mulched sidewalk edge and kind of hold in that soil. Now we did bury the little drain tile that comes from that downspout. We buried it and it's going to come out here by the sidewalk. There are some drainage issues with that, but we're just trying to do a workaround. And this is what we've come up with currently. I'm going to put in some of these Semper Vivum around the base of these hypertufa pots and some river rock. I got a lot of river rock on the hillside garden, you know, and I'm going to add that. Now this is the main pot that I'm going to be replanting today. And you can see that the Hispanicum, the Sedum Hispanicum, just has not come back this year. And I usually have a little bit of difficulty, but by this time of the year, it's come in nicely. And this is just in really terrible shape. So I'm going to replant that. And what I'm going to replant it with is the um, coral carpet. I have a urn of coral carpet over here which is growing tremendously. And I'm going to take that coral carpet. You can see how it's gone crazy in this urn. I'm going to put that in that hypertufa. I think that's going to be beautiful. It should cascade over the top just the same and really give me an attractive look. But that's the plan. I'm going to add one of the little evergreen trees. And that's what we'll be doing. My daughter's helping me. It's Mother's Day, so we're doing things together since we're both mothers. She likes to play in the plants just like I do. So that's what we're doing together to celebrate. Now, let me get down there and help her. Okay, 
So let me sprinkle this in and we can get this planted. Oh, I didn't bring my gloves. Okay, I've got my gloves now. So let's get this planted in. We're just gonna have these shorter geraniums, the big root geraniums here in the front. So they'll kind of hug the edge of the sidewalk and maybe keep the mulch from spreading. That's my little hypertufa leaf that I made out of a big hosta leaf. Didn't do a very good job of it. So that's the only one I've ever tried. But we got these all in now, and I think I'm gonna like that tighter formation right here. Okay, we've got those two in. That one was already planted. That's the blushing turtle. So we've got three of the big root geraniums here. Okay, I've changed my mind about this one. I'm gonna pull him right back up. I am changeable, but I think I'm gonna like one of my hyper tufas here best. So, let me just grab that hypertufa. And see, this one is planted with my sedum emigruntion. Planted with the sedum emigruntion, which is good out in the sun. So that's going to be along this curve. Does that look like it's positioned about right? How about right there? How's that look? Looks good. I like that. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So then this one will go over here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now. 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 Now over on this edge, we're going to work with the taller Johnson Blue Geranium. I really love their vivid color. I've got several big plants of my Johnson Blue, and what I'm doing is putting it right here around the um, gutter. So, this will, what I'm hoping is to disguise the gutter kind of cover it up a little. So I'm putting these clumps down in here. Hello. Now I had brought these geraniums from my old home, transplanted those, pulled them up last, uh, it would have been in late February, early March when we pulled them up, but they did transplant very successfully over here to this house and have grown real well. And I really like the color blue that they are. So I've got, um, I think it ended up being four or five clumps here. And as I said, I'm planting them sort of in a drift right around this downspout at the edge of the house and garage. I think it'll kind of disguise it since they are a little bit taller and they are a thick and bushy plant. And I think that'll look really nice up against the tannish yellow brick of the home. There was a lot of little sprouts that had sprung up and I'm including those too and just sort of putting them in a almost a semicircle around this area. Now the particular day that we've chosen to do all this planting is a rainy day it's kind of a drizzly rain and it has been all morning I think we're the uh, time right now is I think it's probably about noon and we're getting all this done we're getting very wet and very damp so the plants should do well I don't think they'll suffer any kind of a transplant shock or anything because the ground is moist they're still moist with the root ball. We just pulled them up this morning to bring around the front. So I am hoping that they will take root and adapt to their new spot 
very easily. I think that cluster is going to look really nice there. I'm putting just one more kind of to the rear of this hypertufa trough. I think that'll be a nice backdrop for the hypertufa. There are some larger hosta there behind. They're more sheltered under the cherry tree. That looks real good. Now I think that arrangement is going to be nice. And the empty space we're going to fill with more hypertufa. I think we have one more, yes, we've got the one more to transplant other than this one here at the corner. There'll be one at the corner where the sidewalk ends and then another kind of skipping an area and it'll be next to the hypertufa trough. And these again are the shorter big root geraniums and they have pink flowers if I'm not mistaken are they in the pink or lighter peach family. But these have uh, really been growing successfully. And these are clumps that I picked up at a garage sale. The lady was dividing hers. I think I spent two dollars on each clump and look how they've spread and how nicely they even transplanted when I pulled them up at the wrong time of the year. Now those are going to look real nice. Yes, here's the one more clump for next to this hypertufa trough. That way they'll kind of be edged and always be able to have pictures with greenery right next to it. And I think that's going to be nice. And that's going to cover this area with that um, the downspout that comes down and we have this black hose that pulls the rain away from the foundation. But it's looking real nice. And next we'll have to deal with the hypertufa trough that I originally needed to plant. Now this particular one, as I explained before, the Hispanicum appears to have died. I'm going to save it over here in a little puddle because I'll put it somewhere to see if it will revive. But all that little blue you see is where it has died out. There's just a very minimal oh, little bit. A little oh, itty that's bitty. Cute. A little bit of the. Look, that's a little it's bit of the, the Hispanicum right here. Yeah. And it has popped up, but that's the only thing I see. Is isn't this the jelly bean style? Uh, the coral carpet. The coral carpet. Yeah. Oh, look at that one. Oh, yeah. It's trying. Okay. Now, I always do have a little bit of die off. You know, some of the hens and chicks die off. I guess that's just the last for them. And this one, I think I had some of the donkey tail. And of course it dies because it's not hardy for this area. But I'm just going to kind of pull the chicks together. Oh, here's one. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, what do you think? You want all the chicks together? They don't have to be. It doesn't really matter. Okay, how's that look? I don't think that looks bad. There. Okay, now we've got all the stuff here. This is the one that I'm going to pull out to transfer. I'm just gonna gather a big hunk of it. Now, are we putting all of this in here? A big portion of it. I don't even know if that's showing. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Oh my 
There was a huge chunk of it. Dirt and all. Here, let's move that rock. Oh, wait a minute. Soil and all. Oh, yes. Dang. Should I move these out? Yeah. So we can just lay it across? Let's do. Oops. Well, honey, he's just... The soil is just... Okay, do you want me to just lay him in? Yeah, I'd say just lay him in. Oh my gosh, that's going to be gorgeous. Isn't that nicer looking? Oh, that's beautiful, Mother. Horribly beautiful. It looks good. Really looks good. Now, here's some small little guys. Because they will. We'll just they'll plug survive. them in. And I will plug in. A lot of these little chicks that have survived, they'll just continue. Now, this um, coil carpet is so prolific that it will probably swamp them, but I like that look. I do too. I think it looks gorgeous. Okay. And then these oh, little leftovers, I'm just going to plug them around the entrance. Around the um, drain? Mm -hmm. I think that'll look good. Isn't that beautiful? I think that looks really good. I think so too. Let yeah. me. Mm. Alright, now let me give you the full look here. There is the new hypertufa trough. All replanted, and this urn is empty now, and we'll use it for something else. But that looks good, and we'll have the geranium big root here. And in a little bit, I'll get that um, other trough to put right here, and you'll see how that'll look. But I think that's going to be fine. And then I'll be putting those Sempervivum. The, the video is getting so long, I may have to finish up tomorrow and show you the video of the finishing touches. But I think it's looking really, really good. Okay, we usually use a brick to put a pedestal under these, unless I make a circular pedestal. But this one, for my crevice garden, we've set up these bricks in this kind of a pattern. So we'll see how it looks when we get it set down. good what do you think Jenny um, I like the way that looks now that's my crevice garden and how it's grown out this past fall I think it looks really good like that and I am going to get some thyme and plant it inside there because the thyme it kind of fizzled out you can see a little fizzle there but we're going to mulch around it and kind of fill it in to more or less hide the pedestal. But I do like it sitting on a pedestal to raise it above ground. But that will be our new flower bed. Looks really good. We've added another one. On this side, I brought a shade one from out back that has my uh, mouse ears, hostas, and that one I have a huge clump of baby tears. The baby tears in this one are doing just fine, so I'm hoping to have the same luck in this one with the hosta. Looks good, right? We're standing here admiring our work, and all of a sudden we realize we didn't plant that little tree in the hypertufa trough like we wanted to. Oh, we didn't put a. F <laughs> that little one or the big one? Which one do you want? Do you want the tall one? Okay. Do you, do I need a spade? 
Do you want me to get a spade? I'll go get you one. Okay. Oh, I've forgotten my little uh, evergreen tree. So let me get that put in real quickly here. I think he's going to look best right there. I forgot my little evergreen tree that I wanted to put in this pot. So what I'm going to do is take this big clump of the coral carpet and I'm just going to put it down in front right here. I think that'll be good for over my little um, drainage pipe here because that's where my little toad lives and I think he'll like that um, evergreen roof. So I'm going to take the little tree and this particular tree is a lemon cypress. It says Cupressus macrocarpa wilma. I'll put that on the top of the screen. Let me crumble this a little bit out of Got him all crumbled up and I want him right here in the back side. What is that? Is that a rock or is that a peanut? A peanut. It looks like a peanut a squirrel has buried in here. Isn't that cute? A little pesky critter. Okay. Now. That looks so good, Mom. Buried in there and I have had these growing before in my rock gardens and they are hardy they survive they get slightly bigger year after year and I think that's gonna be perfect let me pull just a little bit of this off I don't know if I can get a little hunk there I put that right back under there now I think that looks good and then the coral carpet back on the roof, which I'm going to put some stone around there and all of these hens and chicks. Doesn't have these as a name variety, but I got these at, I think this was Walmart, $7.84 for all of those. And those are going around the water spout. But that's all. I hope you've enjoyed seeing us plant these and refreshing these new Hyper 2 crevice garden in that area later so you can see how that looks. But thanks for joining me today. Thanks for watching the videos and come back for more. See you later.